In this lesson, we're going to talk about the dissociation of water. You have learned previously about two kinds of compounds. Ionic compounds form when some atoms succeed in taking electrons from others, producing electrically charged ions that are then held together by electrical forces. Covalent compounds form when atoms try to take electrons from other atoms, but the other atoms won't let go, so they end up sharing or fighting over those same electrons. Typically, ionic bonds form between metals and nonmetals, and covalent bonds form between nonmetals and other nonmetals. Well, like a lot of things in beginning chemistry, that's actually a bit simplistic. It's not really one or the other. It's more like a continuum. Some compounds are strongly ionic, some compounds are strongly covalent, and some are a little bit in between. Let's look at one. Water. You have learned that water is a covalent compound. It's made up of two nonmetals, hydrogen and oxygen, that are bonded together. The hydrogen atoms are sharing their electron with the oxygen atom, and so on. Here's a glass of water where we can see the individual water molecules. Two hydrogen atoms, the black circles, bonded to an oxygen atom, the red circles. Diagrams like this miss something, though. This is not a static situation. These molecules are constantly moving around, and the atoms within the molecules are constantly moving around, and the electrons around the atoms are constantly moving around. So the attractive forces between the atoms and the molecule are changing. And every now and then, a situation can occur where the oxygen atom actually succeeds in taking the electron away from one of the hydrogen atoms completely. When that happens, we now have a hydrogen atom without an electron, a positive hydrogen ion, and the rest of the molecule, the oxygen and the hydrogen atom still bonded together with an extra electron. You should recognize that as the polyatomic hydroxide ion that you've met in earlier work. So in any sample of water, this is constantly happening. As particles move around and electrons move around, every now and then, the electron can be removed from one of the hydrogen atoms, and that mo molecule can split into a positive hydrogen ion and a negative hydroxide ion. So main point, in any sample of water, at any given moment, some of the molecules will have dissociated. They will have split into positive hydrogen ions and negative hydroxide ions. Now this is a dynamic process. As these particles move around, those particles may end up joining back together again. But at the same time, other water molecules might split. So in any sample of water at any given moment, a very small percentage of those molecules will have separated into positive hydrogen ions and negative hydroxide ions. That's just how it is. If you think about it, you can see that when that happens, each water molecule produces one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. So what that means is that in any given sample of water at any moment in time, there will be equal numbers of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. That might sound obvious, but it's important to understanding acids and bases later on. As with other things in chemistry, we can use our chemical shorthand to describe what's happening here. A water molecule will occasionally separate. When it does, it produces one positive hydrogen ion and one negative hydroxide ion. So by way of summary, in any sample of water at any given moment, a small number of the molecules will be dissociated into positive hydrogen ions and negative hydroxide ions. So in a typical glass of water, you've got mostly water molecules, but there are also a few hydrogen ions and a few hydroxide ions in the mix. And there will always be equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions in pure water. Because every time a molecule splits, we get one of each. That's it.